Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. I don't know what time you're watching, but it really doesn't matter because you are watching, you are tuned in. God bless you. This is Pastor Coach McKissick, Senior of Be The Ram Global Fellowship, and you are having a virtual Bible study, and I'm so glad that you are tuned in. Let us begin in prayer. Bow your heads, close your eyes. God, thank you for this moment. Thank you for this opportunity of transparency. Thank you for this interactive Bible study, virtual Bible study session. I would ask that you would increase in my life and decrease myself. That way, the people that are tuned in, that are streamed in, that they're getting all of you and none of me. God bless you. We love you. We thank you. We can't thank you enough. If you don't do anything for us, again, you've done enough by giving us your son, sacrificing him so that we can live and be free. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, it is one day before Thanksgiving. I know a lot of you all are getting ready to eat, getting ready to practice gluttony, getting ready to do a lot of things that you probably should not be doing. But God is good. He is a forgiver. He is so good. And we're glad that we serve a God that's good. Another thing that you're going to do, most likely, Thursday night goes into Friday. And Friday is what they would call Black Friday or you pretty much the day you're going to go spend all of your money. So we're thinking about business here. So that's kind of pretty much the whole essence of today's Bible study lesson. As you see my shirt, it says stack, pray, and get out the way. That's pretty much what I'm going to do the entire 2021. Did I say I'm going to spend the church's money? No. I said I'm going to stack, stack the things that I have, stack my gifts, stack my talents, stack my wisdom. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray about how I should be using it. Should I be using it to give? Should I be using it to fortify my kingdom? Should I be building up my household? Should I be, you know, pouring and investing into other people? And then I'm going to get out of the way. I'm going to let God do what God does. Problem is that sometimes we stack, we pray, and then we stay. And we try to figure out how we're going to do it, what we're going to do with it. I need you to stack, pray, ties, and then get out the way. Get out of God's way. Let him do what he's going to do because he is the one that can multiply everything that you have, everything that you want. Now, if you want this shirt, go to our website, betheround.com backslash store. Betheround.com backslash store. Now let us get to today's message. I want you to think, since it's Black Friday coming up, imagine that you are a business owner. I know a lot of you all are, but if you're not, imagine that you are a business owner. You have a great gift. You have a great talent. You have a great product, but now you need a business partner. For some reason, the business partner that you had has left or your business got so big that you need another business partner. And you have the option of two business partners. Partner number one is Naomi. Partner number two is Rahab. Now, if you don't know anything about these two women, I'm going to give you a little bit of background history. This is where your Bible study lesson will come in. However, I still want this to be relevant. I want you to understand that what happened then is happening now, and you can apply the things from back then to right now. Okay, y'all got that? Listen up. You got Naomi, and you have Rahab. Now, some of you in your mind, you've already seen it on my Facebook, you've seen it on TikTok, you've seen it on uh, Twitter, Snapchat, whatever. So you've already decided who your business partner is going to be. But you may have made that decision without thinking about it. Some of you all have already decided, you know what, I don't want to be with no Rahab. Rahab is not working in my business. So, but you got to think about it. At the end of the day, each of the ladies were used to glorify God. They were used to uplift the kingdom. So get out your feelings. We do have the no judgment zone here at Be The Ram Global Fellowship. So we don't judge. Stop judging. I know what you're thinking. All right, let's do a first. We're going to do a breakdown of Naomi. Naomi, as you know, she was a married woman. She would be the woman that's probably the one that you put out in front right now, that you would ask that, you know, probably your grandma, probably your, the grandma that you know. Probably uh, the teacher, the, the, the prestigious lady, the one with class and elegance. So she had a husband who was a soldier. Her and that husband had two sons. 
those sons got married. At one point, her husband passed away. Okay? Her husband's gone. Now it's just her, her sons, and her uh, daughter-in-law. So there's two of them. Now I'm thinking that she probably wasn't a monster-in-law because of what happened next. After the sons died, now it's three women. You got Naomi, you got Ruth, and you got Orpah. So, and now if you want to follow this, is this is in the book of Ruth. King James, ERV, NIV, all of them, same thing. Same story, Ruth, Naomi, book of Ruth. They ain't up the roof, but we're focusing on Naomi right here. So now you have Naomi, who is the mother-in-law. You have Oprah, and you have uh, Ruth. So <laughs> Naomi is pretty much like, uh, my, my job is done. I ain't got no husband. <laughs> I don't have no son, no kids. Y'all chicks can go. Y'all go. I'm going back. I'm going back to my hometown. <laughs> I'm going back to Columbus. I done moved up here to Atlanta. I done moved down here to Detroit. I done moved to New York following, you know, doing what I'm supposed to do as a wife and a mother. Now all those titles fall off. Think about it. What do you do when the titles that you had fall off for whatever reason, whether it be they fell off because of death, they fell off because of employment issues? Do you revert back to where you started? Or do you stay in the environment and the atmosphere that you were put in as a result of what you went through? So, Pretty much, uh, Orpah says, deuces, all right, good. Didn't want to be with you anyway. Never liked you. Uh, I'm out. I ain't finna be hanging with you. Uh, Ruth, on the other hand, Ruth says, you know what? Where you go, I go. <laughs> what you do, I do. Your people are my people. So <laughs> Ruth follows Naomi. And where Naomi went, Ruth went. Now, when Naomi showed up to this town, she says pretty much, don't call me Naomi. That's not my name no more. She gave herself another name that meant emptiness and bitterness and sadness. She said, don't even call me Naomi. Sometimes you go through so much that you want to change your own identity, but that is not what God says. God says, you are who I call you to be, and you're going to be that no matter of what you have on the outside. What's attached to you does not define you. What you have does not define you. What's inside of you is what defines you. So now, when I talk about Naomi, I speak about the business partner, uh, the woman of wisdom. She's the one that's going to give you this wisdom because uh, pretty much uh, she had no son to give Ruth. She even advised her, like, look, lady, I don't know what to, what my son did to you, but I don't even have time to make you another husband. If I were to find a man, get married, have kids, are you going to wait? Are you going to uh, wait on, you know, are you going to wait for him to come an adult? At that point, he probably wouldn't want you anyway because you're going to be pretty much old. However, she says, I don't have a husband to give you. I can't give you one, but Ruth followed her anyway. It was a loyalty, but she was a woman of wisdom. I would imagine that through that entire marriage, when the son was out at war and the son was out working, they developed a relationship that she fed and she poured into uh, Ruth. Now, I, I, I begin to think if, because I'm being transparent and real, where was Ruth's mother? Did, did Ruth, was Ruth a woman that didn't have a good relationship with her biological mother? Did Naomi come in at a time when she was a young girl and pretty much reared her up into being a woman? However, moving forward in the story, so uh, Ruth sends uh, Naomi out, or no, Naomi sends Ruth out to work, and she's working in the field of a pretty much wealthy guy named Boaz, and uh, she comes back and says, hey, that's this guy, and he's wealthy and he's doing well. And huh, he noticed me. And same thing happened. Uh, Boaz is walking through the field. And he's walking. And he looks down. He says, Woo, who is that? Now, I can imagine how fine that <laughs> Ruth was. How fine was this woman that a rich man is walking through the field and he noticed her. Now, let's just keep it 100. Because that's the only way I can be. If she's down picking you know, we picking whatever she was picking. She was probably bent over. I imagine that Ruth was a woman of African-American heritage and descent. So I'll let you put it together. But if you're a man, even if you're a woman, you pretty much know what's going on right now. Uh, Boaz is walking in and he looked around. He said, I got to have that. Whatever it takes, get me hurt. He told his men, look, 
whatever it, whatever it takes, that's going to be my woman. I need you to make sure that she does not have to work. I, matter of fact, she's on fine. I want you to put all the wheat and the grains right in front of her. All she got to do is put it in her basket. I don't even want her hands getting dirty no more. <laughs> just just do it for her. <laughs> Ain't you? Woo! Woo! So I got to <laughs> stay in the spirit, coach. So, here we go. So, uh... Ruth goes back to the wise woman, Naomi. Naomi gives her advice. She says, what I need you to do, if you really want this man, I need you to go while he sleep and lay at his feet. I want you to freshen yourself up. You're already fine, girl. You know you're fine. That's what my son got you. But now my son is not here. But I can't do nothing for you. At least I can give you wisdom. So go lay at his feet. So Boaz, <laughs> after a long day's work, he's an older guy now. We're talking about an older fella and a young lady that's Bam, bam, bam. She looks good. She's fine. She got everything. She's a bag of hot fries and a Coke. You know what I'm saying? And a slushie. So they got her. She's laying. He's asleep. Imagine, fellas, you're laying in your bed in your older age, 50s, 60s, 70s, and you start smelling this fragrance, whether it be, you know, vanilla, whether it be, you know, whatever the smell is. And it's just smelling like heaven. And, and then you, you know, you stretch out and you feel something at your feet. And you know what? In the world, like, first of all, you're thinking, you know, I'm going to have to bust somebody's head. I hope I don't get caught slipping. And then you realize it's this chick. Excuse me. Some people get offended by the word chick. I don't mean to offend anyone. There's a beautiful young lady at the end of my bed. Okay, so you're laying down. There's a beautiful young lady at your bed. You ain't married. You single. You ain't got no problems, and this woman appears at your bed. First, you're thinking, I'm dreaming, so if I'm dreaming anyway, I might as well enjoy this dream. <sighs> I'm just keeping it real. But then you say, well, what if I'm not dreaming? What if this is a trap? What if somebody, right when we get involved, we start getting to know each other? My door gets kicked in. All the jump out boys come and putting guns to my head. So there's a lot going through Boaz's head right now. Now, what happened was Boaz just, he didn't touch her. But he understood that she was pretty much presenting herself to him just like Naomi told him to. And Naomi told her, hey, don't do it. Just lay at his feet. Lay at his feet. Now, could you imagine, men, if women would just lay at your feet? First of all, you need to be worthy of a woman laying at your feet. You can't have a woman laying at your feet if you don't have a job, if you don't have a call, if you don't have a vision, if you don't even have a mission. You have no guidance. You have no structure. You have no nothing. No, nobody's going to lay at your feet because you're not giving them a feet to lay at. Your feet are dusty, okay? Let's move on. So, now we have... <laughs> At this point, with after the advice that Naomi gave Ruth, Boaz made sure that he had to do whatever he had to do. He had to trick a relative, do whatever he had to do to end up getting this woman. He did end up getting her, and it ended up being in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Flash forward and make it make sense, Coach. Thank you. I'm glad you asked me to do that. So we're just talking about pretty much... Naomi, and Naomi gave Ruth wisdom. So your business partner choice, number one, is Naomi, who's going to give you a lot of wisdom. And now we go to choice number two, option number two, which is on the other side of the tracks. This is coming from the book of Joshua chapter two. Joshua chapter two, you have Rahab. Rahab is not your mama's daughter. Rahab is not the one that you want to really bring home for dinner and introduce to your parents. Rahab is the chick that has been out there. She is a harlot. If you don't know what a harlot is, she is a woman that makes money off of her body. A lot of you guys call it people with OnlyFans accounts. So it's not too much different that was going on then that's going on now. Back then, it was just a little more, you know, you probably shouldn't be doing this. Then we came to a time that it was embarrassed to get called out. Now people are calling themselves out and making money. I don't know how much they're making, but they're making money. So you have Naomi, who was the good girl, Rahab, who was the bad girl. And what I would say about Rahab, she is the ultimate negotiator. So do you want your business partner to be the one who's going to give you wisdom? Or do you want your business partner to be the one who's going to be somebody that can negotiate things for you? How does she negotiate? Negotiate 
Joshua chapter 2. Uh, Joshua, who's a young soldier at this time, uh, full of energy, he sends a uh, man over to Shittim because he's going to take over this territory. So he sends some spies over the river. And when they get over there, it was pretty much somebody told them, hey, y'all already know somebody's over here watching. And the guys, the two spies, they went into a house, house of a harlot. This harlot name was Rahab. Rahab, uh, pretty much when the guys came, the soldiers came to seize the men who had come over, she hid them. She hit them. She hit them on the roof. Isn't it something that you can find yourself in a place that you should not be with people that you should not be with, and they will be the ones that will help you out? Some of us have been in bad situations. We've been out. We've been down. We have been broke. We have been unemployed. We have been caught out, caught out of the pocket, and we just knew without a shadow of a doubt that we can call on this family member. We can call on a person we have been giving money to for the last umpteen years. And when you call them, uh-uh, not off. And ain't nothing. They didn't help you out, not one bit. But the person that did help you was a person that you never thought would help you, was the one who was least likely to come to your rescue. That's the same thing that happened here with Rahab. Rahab was a harlot. Who would think that a harlot would be the one to help the people that were coming over to take the city. But keep in mind, this harlot, when she sent the men off, they came and said, hey, hey, where they at? I know they're over here. She says, they did come, but they left. They went off to the mountains. If I was you, I'd run quick and get them because you'd be able to catch them. So after she sent them off on a dummy mission, she went and talked to the two soldiers. She said, look, Guys, I already know that God has given you this city. I know that God has given you the wisdom to take over. I just need you to protect my house, protect my father's house. Think about it. How did she know what God had given them? This lets you know that all people that you think are bad, they're not really bad. They're just being misjudged. They may be being misled. They may just be in a situation that they're trying to get out of that they just can't get out of. So she knows God. Just because you're in the club does not mean you know God. Just because you're on a pole does not mean that you don't know God. Just because you are selling your body does not mean you don't lo love God. I learned as an educator, when you have young people, you have to address the situation and not the person. It's your actions that I don't like. I don't have an issue with you. I don't like what you're doing. When you're parenting, you don't attack the child. You attack the ailment. Hey, look, you stealing you lying. I don't like that you lied. I love you, but I don't like your actions. And that's how we have to be as Christians. If we're going to win the 97% and be the round, we have to learn to stop putting a whole cast and a blanket over individuals and say, look, I love you, my brother. What you're doing is wrong, but I love you. And that's how you're going to win. You're not going to get any bees with vinegar. You need to start putting out a little more honey. So moving forward in this story, she tells the soldiers, like, look, I already know. But I just need you to look out for me just like I looked out for you. And they say, well, you know, this is what I'll do. I'll give you this cord, this red cord. And when we come in to seize the city and we'll be back, I just need you to hang this cord out of your window. Talking about Joshua chapter two here, go and read it. Hang this cord out of your window and everybody in that house, I'll let my soldiers know that we're going to forepass that house. We're, we're not going to harm anyone in that house. But if your relatives come out of that house, we're going to knock their heads off. So it is on them and we ain't going to feel bad for it. So that is a message. That is a word to some of you. God is telling you that if you stay in the house, you are protected. If you stay in the house, you are going to get everything that you're going to need. You're going to be uh, fed. You're going to be closed. You're going to have the finances that you need. But when you step out of the place that God told you to be in, you will struggle. And he will not feel bad for you when you end up where you end. So stay in God's house. I don't know if God is telling you to stay in a marriage. That may be the house. He may be staying, telling you to stay into a, in a career path. That may be the house. It may be telling you to stay in a relationship or get out of it. The, the house could be outside of the realm that you have been trying to operate in. But God is saying that I need you to stay where you are. Because you are protected in that place. You are loved in that place. You are, you, you know, you may feel like you're ready to jump out and start your own. But God is saying, not yet. 
Not yet does not mean no. Stop taking not yet as a no. Moving forward. So they make this deal. And of course, the men come in. They tear everybody up. And they leave the house. And what did what did uh, Rahab do? Rahab says, you know what? I need everybody in my family to come into the house. I don't need you over there. I don't need you over there. I need you in the house. I need you in this house because this is a house in a place of protection. Everybody's protected. So, of course, she had to promise that she would not tell uh, about this, this deal pretty much. Uh, we know about it now, 2,000 years later. So she told somebody. But well, somebody told somebody, maybe the soldier, if she kept it that much of a secret, we wouldn't know about it. But it worked at that period. So you have partner number one. Uh, it is Naomi, the ultimate wise woman. And you have partner number two, Rahab, the ultimate negotiator. Who are you going to choose to be with your business? Who's going to be your business partner? What I need you to realize, pretty much the moral of this whole story, I need you to vote. I don't know if you're on whatever you're on, social media, Facebook, TikTok, whatever, Twitter, vote. Vote, 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 vote. But I need you to understand in the beginning, you probably said, I want nothing to do with Rahab. You may be walking on the street and say, oh, she's a scrap out. She said, she said, and saying, I don't want nothing to do with it because God could not possibly send a word through this woman. Or if you're on that other side of the tracks and you're looking, you're judging the woman who did choose to get married before she had kids. It could be the woman who did choose to uh, you know, work a hard job and, and and cover herself. There's judgment going on on both sides of the tracks. So we have to make sure that we're not doing that because God used both of those women. He used the whole situation to get glory. God, the people were protected. Provisions were made. All of this happened by two women from separate sides of the tracks. So how you vote will probably be, uh, you know, a relevance uh, uh, of how you have lived your life. But there is no judgment here. I want you to vote. I want you to, you know, see it through. And now I'll give you an opportunity that if you are not saved, I'd ask that you just comment. Comment. And I will personally reach out to you and make sure that we lead you through the prayer of salvation and pretty much give you a guide of kind of how to manage this new lifestyle that you're about to be in. If you want to donate, if you want to give to this ministry, you know, it's not all about giving. But if you are a giver and that is a part of ministry, go to our website, be the backslash giving. Or you can just cash out dollar sign BTR Global. I hope that you have been blessed by this Bible study lesson. I hope that you have been enlightened. I hope that your antlers have, you know, raised up in your antennas to maybe not judge so many people and understand that God is using people around you that you think he's not. Let us pray so we can move on and enjoy our Thanksgiving. God, thank you for this moment. Thank you for allowing us to win the 97%. Thank you for the people that will be uh, touched as an effect of this this uh, Bible study lesson. Thank you for the souls that will be won. Thank you for the new members that will join this 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 uh, this fellowship. We're virtual, we're distant, but we're not disconnected. God, we love you, we thank you, we praise you, and we always promise to give you the glory and the honor at the end of the day. This is Pastor Coach McKissie of Be The Ram Global Fellowship. And until next time, win the 97%, be the ram, God loves you, so do I, and I'm out.